Kitchen Table Electronics Advanced Topics for Lesson 5, Number 2, Complex Analysis of Impedances. So let's start by remembering what a complex number is. And by the way, I'm not going to try and write the math out real time with my glitchy Microsoft pen. So I hope I go through this slowly enough for you without writing it out. But here is a complex number z, defined as the sum of a real part x and an imaginary part y, multiplied by i square root of minus 1 to denote that this is the imaginary component. By the way, throughout I've stuck with i because this is the common physics notation. And so when i for the square root of minus 1 and i for a current appear, I'm going to use capital I. Okay. We can plot this complex number on a two-dimensional plot where one of the axes, the vertical axis, denotes the imaginary axis. So this quantity y here is really iy. And the horizontal axis here denotes the real axis. And then in that case, if we go along here by x and up here by y, this point represents the complex number x plus iy. Now we can just as easily denote this point by a radial distance to it from the origin and an angle with respect to the x-axis. And then from elementary trigonometry, you see that z plus iy is the same as r cosine theta, that's this distance here, plus i r sine theta, that's this distance here. You'll recognize this sum of a cosine and an i sine as r e to the i theta from Euler's theorem. So very often complex numbers are written this way because they represent very convenient solutions of differential equations. One other piece that comes from this uh, geometry here is this angle theta. Clearly the tangent of this angle is defined by y divided by x or the ratio of the imaginary part of the complex number to the real part. OK, what's the magnitude of this number? Well, we know that the magnitude of r is given by, or r squared, is given by x squared plus y squared from Pythagoras' theorem. However, we have the problem that y is iy and iy squared is minus y squared. How do we get around this? Well, recall that for complex numbers, multiplication or forming a square is defined by taking the number and multiplying it by its complex conjugate. The complex conjugate of a complex number is simply the same number with the sign of the imaginary part changed. So here we have x plus iy. The complex conjugate is just x minus iy. And so when we multiply these two together, we get x squared plus y squared. And we get plus ixy and minus ixy. They cancel out. So Pythagoras's theorem is recovered for the magnitudes, providing we use this rule for the multiplication of complex numbers. Now let's get back to circuits. So let's assume we have a sinusoidally, or in this case, cosinusoidally um, varying waveform with time, which I can write as V equals V0 cosine omega t. You can see that I could write this cosine as the real part of E to the I omega t. In other words, I can write this whole thing out here as V0, the real part of e to the i omega t, which is just V0, the real part of cos omega t plus i sine omega t from Euler's theorem, that is just cosine omega t, and so this is this identity. OK, armed with this refresher on complex numbers, we can take a look at the math for capacitors. Recall that the current through a capacitor, big I here, is the capacitance in farad times the rate of change of voltage in volts per second. So I is C dV dt. 
if we put in here v0 cos omega t and take the derivative of that we obtain from the cosine a minus sine and then from the derivative of the argument because remember it's sine theta cosine theta that goes to minus sine theta we bring out an omega here so the expression for the current then is minus omega c v0 sine omega t but let's go back to this um, expression for the cosine up here we had the real part of cos omega t plus i sine omega t if we multiply this by i then we have i cos omega t minus sine omega t because i times i is minus one and the real part of that then is minus sine omega t which is exactly what we've got here a minus sine and a sine instead of a cosine so if we start with our voltage being v equals v0 the real part of e to the i omega t the current through a capacitor then is given by i omega c times this v here the impedance is in general defined as the ratio between voltage and current just as the resistance is and you can see from this expression here that v over big i is 1 over little i omega c or if we multiply top and bottom by i minus i over omega c and that is what we called the impedance of a capacitor so i'm going to leave the next step to you which is to go through the equivalent math for the expression for the voltage generated across an inductor which if you recall is given by the inductance in Henry's times the rate of change of current in amps per second with a minus sign because the voltage generated by the inductor opposes the applied voltage if you go through the arguments I just presented for the capacitor you will find the expression for the inductive impedance being I omega L